how hard did you push it till I black out? Yes. Numerous times. Yes. What's happening, municipals? This is Ashton and uh, not Big C uh, here with a uh, longtime, longtime friend uh, and actually like m- many time guest, just not in a second. Uh, my good buddy, Nick, uh, da- our, 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 our Southern California correspondent, which I guess at this point we have many. But Nick coming to us live from his beautiful office in, uh, in San Diego, where I spent uh, some time a couple weeks and we'll spend some time today talking about uh, that trip uh, and the courses that we played, uh, Goat Hill Park and Torrey North. Uh, but for right now, Nick, how you doing, my man? It's good to, I, I don't know, I, we had such, so much fun and I wish I was back down there. Yeah, dude, doing great. Doing great. Excited to be on. Excited to talk about the trip and uh, talk about some courses that I love down here in San Diego. Yeah, r- really fun. Yeah, but give people, um, again, it's been a second since you've been on, give people kind of a, a state of the union. The the big news is that you're healthy. you kind of been battling some uh some health concerns. I mean, to be clear, not like health concerns, otherwise like health concerns, like wrist and things, but you're, you're back in the saddle and it seems like you're playing some good golf. Yeah. Playing decent golf. Uh, you know, it has been kind of a frustrating year with injuries and stuff. I had a uh, torn ligament in my wrist, which knocked me out of the cookout back in the spring and kept me off the golf course for three months. So that was tough. Um, and to be honest, I, I actually think it, it actually kind of did some wonders for my golf game. I came back um, late summer and started swinging again and was completely freed up. And I've just tried to ride that train. I have, um, you know, in the last year t- taken a lot of swing lessons and have a ton of notes from my coach. And, um, you know, it, it saved my note app on my phone. And since coming back from the injury, I have not even opened that that note. I have tried to keep my my brain as free and unburdened as possible. Um, and it's really done wonders for the golf game. I've got my handicap down to a career low of down, uh, down like 12 and a half or something like that. 12 something right now. So, um, that's great. Haven't been playing a lot, a lot, but, um, yeah, feeling good about how I'm hitting the ball and, um, you know, ball starting to go where I want it to go more often. So that's been, uh, it's been a good return and, and hoping that, uh, next year I can get down to a single digit. That's the goal for, for the game for the next year. So, um, yeah. yeah and decent that's that's like both very doable and also super exciting i mean that's kind of like I feel like that's a club you know i don't know like just being able to say you know i'm a, I'm a single digit handicap is i don't know and it's just kind of <laughs> sometimes i have to remind myself that you picked up golf like very recently and for you to even be sniffing that's um awesome but yeah i think that's i mean you've always kind of been this way but one thing that i definitely noticed playing golf with you at the crab shack and also in san diego was um, like, it just looks like you're, uh, like, it looks like you're an athlete, which I think is really important for a lot of people. I think that golf is so hard where it's, you know, it's, it's like, you know, move your shoulder and, 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 and you just get so like, I watched it with Liz. It's been fascinating watching her pick up golf because she was super freed up, you know, and even in the early days she was hitting it, you know, for her uh, a long way. And then she took lessons and she was hitting her driver like 15 yards. And as actually JD, JD's like, how many lessons have you had? And, and you could tell she was just like so mechanical and she was so locked up. But yeah, you, you just kind of seemed like you were, you know, swinging hard and not thinking a whole lot. And I kind of like the little sway you've got over the ball. And it's just like, seems like you're, you, you look like an athlete, which is again, the, the best thing you can do. As long as you're mechanic, you know, mechanically, you got to get everything lined up. But if you can be an athlete over the ball and, and just kind of, as Brooks Hussey, I talk about this a lot as Brooks talks about trying to make golf a reactive sport, right? Um, it seems like you're playing golf that way, which is fun to watch. Yeah. See ball, hit ball. Definitely, definitely trying to not think too much. It's been, like I said, really freed me up, um, you know, since I've come back from the injury. So trying to ride that wave as long as I can. And so far it's working. So yeah, then it's been fun. It's been a bit fun to get back onto the course. Awesome. Uh, well, before we dive into San Diego, I'm throwing you a total curveball here, but just because I, I mentioned it, you know, Chris and I talked about the Crab Shack, but we'd just love to kind of get your thoughts about the Crab Shack because obviously you were not able to go to the cookout, but because of that, you got to come to the Crab Shack. Um, any thoughts you want to share about the Crab Shack or, you know, how you feel about Gearheart or just anything? It's just kind of giving, you know, somebody who's not me and Chris the availability to talk about the event, the golf course, like anything that stuck out to you. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys have set a really high bar for, you know, what these municipal tournaments can be with the work you guys have done on the cookout the last few years. Um, 
and the Crab Shack lived up to it. You know, it definitely felt like its own separate event. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the golf course and, and the people there as well. Obviously, there's much more of an Oregon crew, um, a lot of new faces who I wasn't familiar with prior to, to coming up to Oregon. But um, the course and the facilities there are really special. I think the, the whole the whole property is really just geared towards keeping you there, um, which I'm sure is, is by design on their part, really well done by the Gearheart folks. Uh, but with the, the, you know, the different bars and restaurants on property, um, you know, there's the, the bunker bar, right? Like down below, uh, kind of next to the pro shop. Super cool. I think someone, I'm not gonna be able to take credit for it, but someone said like, I just want to come and post up in this bar, drink a scotch and, you know, read a, read an old book about, you know, wooden ships. And like, that's exactly the kind of cozy, very intimate vibe that this, uh, this place kind of gives. And, um, de definitely different than, than Zadie's at the cookout down at uh, Ojai or in Ojai rather. And I think, you know, that's a credit to Gearheart. It's a really fun property, fun facility, kind of keeps you there, I think. Um, and the course itself is fantastic. I, you know, really the link style is, is just such a fun way to play golf. It's a fun, fun place to have a tournament, especially cause it is short. So it doesn't feel like, um, you know, the big hitters are, are overwhelmingly advantaged at, uh, at Gearheart. Like they might be more advantaged at uh, the cookout at Soul Park. So, um, really fun tournament, fun place to hang out for three days and play a bunch of golf and, you know, it's a great crew. So, um, yeah, aces, aces all the way around for you guys. Really well done. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I, I think we, we we mentioned this on the pod, but I actually give Sally credit for this from the the no laying up video. But a lot of half par holes, I think, at Gearheart, which I think is like about as good as it gets for match play, right? It's perfect for match. Play. Um, you can like totally press the gas pedal down and hit driver and force the issue, um, but. You know, if you're not a long hitter, like it's not a place you need. Yeah, I think hitting it a long way is a much bigger advantage at a place like uh, Soul Park. But <clears throat> yeah, I think that it's a, it's a bunch of half par holes, very welcoming. Uh, but yeah, I think of course, like I mean, we I played, you know, I I played for a score on Friday and that was fun. But I think it's a it's, a, it's just a wonderful match play course where you can just like you know very strategically decide, especially you got like you and I played all shot again. 3-0, and, um, and it's a lot of times where, you know, we have options off the tee and you really can, it's not just a bang drive. You can hit driver everywhere pretty much, but, like, th there is some thought to it, and that's just the best kind of, of match play golf course. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. So we'll start off with um, Goat Hill Park, uh, but maybe it would be helpful, Nick, we'll kind of do this in chapters. Could you take people, because I know that um, – Goat Hill is in Oceanside. I still don't really know what that means. I believe that's north. But explain to people where Goat Hill Park falls relative to you and kind of where it falls in general. Um, and you had played there once, I think, before. So just give people a, a sense of Goat Hill Park and a little about it. Yeah, you know, I definitely am not the authority on Goat Hill. Um, I've only been there twice. So it's not not part of my regular rota. And part of that is because it is in Oceanside. It's, you know, it's a good 35, 40 minute drive from my house. And we've got so many good options down near near me. I live in, in the city um, of San Diego that I don't really like to fight the traffic uh, north to Oceanside. It's kind of the last town before you get to Camp Pendleton and then Orange County. And then you're up in, you know, that whole part of the uh, greater LA Orange County area. Um, so, you know, far North County, San Diego, and um, it's, uh, it, it is, you know, a fun little course when we get into the course itself. But um, I think one of the main things there that I've noticed is, is it is relatively close to the ocean. And so you're still feeling the effects of the prevailing winds coming in, um, you know, in Southern California, the prevailing winds for nine to 10 months out of the year are, are onshore winds. And so, that was one of the first things I noticed when you're playing at Goat Hill. Um, the wind is pretty steady, um, depending on the day. It can be very steady and um, I think a pretty major factor. And, and the location of the golf course being just a couple miles from the ocean um, has uh, a lot to play in that. So, um, you know, it's it's not ocean uh, or, or beachside golf, but it is feeling the effects of the, uh, the onshore winds there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I... I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, I think that you had given me a bit of a, do, do you say primer or primer? I, I've always been a primer person, but I've heard someone recently say primer and apparently that's also okay. What do you, do you say primer or primer? 
I mean, I, I lived a couple years in England when I was a kid, and I still wouldn't ever say primer. It's absolutely primer. We're American. Okay. We could say that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, we could talk about that. But, I mean, I, I guess to give people a sense, I mean, anyone who's ever listened to one of these podcasts knows that, like, the thing that makes me want to smash my head against the table is the word, you know, like vibe. And especially right now, God, watching playoff baseball or, or not really watching, just being around. It's like, you know, the vibes around the Mets and just like vomit, like absolutely like vomit. Um, partly because it's the Mets and just like, it's just a bunch of playoff baseball is just hocus pocus. And I'm, that's coming from a bitter Braves fan, but like, it's just vibes, 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 vibes. Um, but I think that, uh, Goat Hill really nails that. I think that Goat Hill, I think that Goat Hill's um, like parking lot range, putting green, and like um, area around the clubhouse maybe fits the ethos of what they're going for as well as any place I've ever been. Um, I, I would describe the clubhouse as like a, I mean, it feels sort of like a converted garage almost, right? Like imagine if like you have a really big garage and you just kind of make it like a, a golf den, right? That That's how it feels. And I think that that's very much the ethos of the place. If you told me, you know, absolutely no dress code, people will play in, you know, bare feet, very, very, very chill, which I think is refreshing. And um, I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me when you pulled in was um, – a clubhouse that seemed to very much like understand what, what it was and how it fit into um, the golf landscape. Um, like a place that I want to get back to. And we had a beer afterwards. I'm like, I, I want to do that again. Like that's a place like I, I think I could spend all afternoon and there's probably a lot of golf sickos out there. You could probably talk to, but it's a great clubhouse. It is. And I think, I think, um, that's probably the best part of, of Goat Hill. The greens are fun, and we'll get into the course itself, but um, the post-round hang is great. They had, both times I've played, they've had that tent set up outside with a guy in the grill cooking hot dogs and hamburgers and you know, who knows what else, and people are just hanging around eating a burger or a hot dog yeah. and drinking a beer. And and um, I think they, they really, to your point, I think they nail that. Um, that's, that's probably the best part about it. I also want to shout out a uh, part of the course. They have, um, I think it's three or six holes. Um, like a little short course, a short course for an executive course, um, right next to the driving range. We didn't see it very much. We didn't play it, but it's, it's, you know, it's for the kids. Uh, so we, you can just walk on and play and, and get to know the game there. So, uh, I think they really do all everything like outside of the golf course, I think is 10 out of 10. The range is fantastic. It's in great shape. Um, and yeah, the, the clubhouse is fantastic. You, you called it a garage. I think that's a good comp. Uh, I think surf shop is also a really good comp. Um, it, they even have surfboards, you know, stood up against the wall or hanging from the ceiling. So, yeah. um, you know, being Oceanside's a pretty big surf surf town uh, on the coast. So uh, I think that's very fitting too. It's just a really chill laid back vibe. Um, it's very SoCal and, as, as cliche as that is. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like about as SoCal as it gets. <laughs> it is. And I think what, what's interesting is you'll see, I think they have a pretty, large um large group of regulars that play there very often because most of the guys you see most of the guys i see with the early tea times um walking around in flip-flops and t-shirts most of them are wearing ocean or goat hill park t-shirts i think there's a pretty the herd um, i think i saw in the bathroom it's like they call it the herd i believe yeah, I don't know much about the herd. I know they have a bunch of events throughout the week, like mandatory golf Fridays, and they've got a pirate league in the afternoons. I think sometime maybe it's Tuesdays. I don't really know. Um, it's very much it's very much an Oceanside community course, um, and I am not part of that community, so I'm definitely on the outside looking in. And I think you can kind of feel some of that too. Um, yeah, you could definitely feel like you're not part of the in crowd if you're not wearing a, a Goat Hill T-shirt and you know saying hello to the starter by his first name. Um, so there is a little bit of, I don't want to call it an old boys club, but definitely an in crowd, yeah. um, at Goat Hill Park. That said, they're very welcoming to us and, and we had an awesome time. So yeah. I don't want to, I don't want that, to, that to scare anybody away from, from playing there. It's a uh, super no, chill. But there's, there's very few very places where California both of place. those things are true. Cause I definitely felt that way around. Like you can feel immediately that, yeah, you said it best, like an in crowd, but then it's like, if you're not in the, if you're not in the in crowd, you're still going to feel super welcome. Um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's also such an interesting, cause like the way that, like the way that I think about it though, is like, 
and again, we're not trying to beat around the bush, but like, I'm glad that you kind of are alluding to this because it's how I feel is like, I'm just going to come out and say it. Like, again, this is, I'm, you know, I've been destroyed on this podcast for some being honest about golf courses. God forbid. I don't think Goat Hill is a very good golf course. Like I just, I've thought more about it. Like, I don't think it's a very good golf course, um, but that's okay. Like, I mean, it, 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 I feel like it knows what it is. And the, and the thing I also feel like that I, you know, at some point I probably need to, to effort the, the super or the maintenance crew or, or somebody, because I don't think as it currently is, Goat Hill is a very good golf course, but I think it, it appears to be that they're taking steps to make it a better golf course, right? Like the two holes that stood out to me the most were 10 and 18, where if you're paying attention at all, there's clearly been work done like on, on 18, they're building like revetted bunkers, which like, I can't really, art- this is an audio medium, but like a lot of the golf course just feels like scruffy and kind of tired. And it's like very like Canyon golf, which like, that's kind of wild because like a good, I think it was actually really helpful for me was we played with our friend Howie, um, who is kind of not part of our, like when I say friend group, like he's not part of like, our municipal's group. He's not like, he's not coming to events. Like he, he's one of our good friends from actually from high school and how he's just kind of picked. He's always played, but he, I would say he's a new golfer. And there was just a like, I think just it, to give, just to give some context on Howie's ability before you go into this, his yeah. goal, when he pulled up that morning, he said to me out loud, make my contact. goal is to make contact with the ball 50% of the time. Yeah. So that's, you know, this, yeah. A little more context to your story No, here. no, it's very helpful. Because I think for me, I would have assumed, and again, this is incorrect, but when I think short, I tend to think forgiving. I tend, you know, I kind of have these assumptions. And I think it was number two. It's like, we, we, we got down there and it's like, okay, uh, you know, the, the green is 30 feet above us and it's like forced carry over a canyon the whole way. And like, I, I click the number and I'm like, I can either hit a hard nine iron or full eight. And I'm like, how, how he just doesn't have that shot. Right. But then you get this weird thing where it's like, I think that it's incredible and very cool that they have junior tees, which are all like very short, but then like, there's a whole, like, look, we're team, team T at forward, but you know, I can understand why how he might not want to go play from the junior tees. So it's one of these things where it's like, I think that like for, you know, the herd or kind of the in community, it's like, I'd like to have one of them on and tell me what Goat Hill means to them. I think it has that ethos, but it's almost like Goat Hill can't, like, I don't know that it knows what it is as a golf course, right? We're like, it's not, I don't know, as someone I've talked about, like, I, I like being challenged. I like hitting driver. It's definitely not that golf course, but it's certainly not like, hey, Howie, like, don't wear any shoes and you're going to find your ball everywhere because that's not the golf course either. There's a lot of places you cannot hit it there. A lot of them. And so I don't know, but, but like I said, it's like, it's kind of this scraggly golf course. It's not a bad thing. It's just what it is. It's 48 bucks. We need more places like that, but they're trying like the, the revetted bunkers, like they're putting in work. So I I'm super curious to go back there every, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't think we'll probably go there every time I go to San Diego, but every two years go back to goat hill and be like wow they've done six holes now they've done eight holes and i think it's on its way to becoming something interesting but yeah if, if you're going to just kind of if you're going to expect like uh what you think of as a normal golf course it's it's not that you're like did you agree yeah i i the golf course itself i don't think is is like that interesting i think the the, the most interesting part and the best part of the course of the green, I think they've clearly put more money into the greens than the rest of the course, which Great. is the Break way to the do fields. it. If you have a limited budget, allocate more of it. Exactly. You know, 30 yards and in. Great. Put the money there. Um, and that is, that's also the golf course's defense because it is so short. I think it's important to say that the course is laid out over the, over a hill and some canyons surrounding it. And so, you know, I would have to go back and count the exact number, but it's an executive course. There's, I don't, I don't know, maybe nine par threes and probably all nine, maybe eight out of the nine are playing across the Canyon. So there's a lot of forced carry shots. Even some of the par fours have forced carry shots, you know, forced carry approaches or forced carry tee shots um, as you're playing across some pretty severe Canyon. And so it is, it's not a beginner friendly course. Um, 
And because of that, you know, because there's not a whole lot of landing areas for uh, even on some of these, um, you know, shorter holes, it, it becomes all about the greens. And so they have pretty small greens um, that they, in their in fairness to them, they do a really nice job taking care of. And I think one of the cool things is the greens are small and there are some pretty severe slopes on them. It's not, not Soul Park, but there are some pretty fun and interesting greens. Um, and they, I think they do a nice job of keeping the speed. Both times I've played it, they've kept the speed like relatively slow compared to other courses in the area that I would normally play. Um, which I think gives those severe slopes a little bit more bite. They can pin some really tough locations with those, with the slower greens. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's what the golf course is really about. It's really about the greens and your short game and how good are you with your scoring irons? And if you're not good enough, how good is your short game to get close with the chip? That's where, that's what Goat Hill's about. Yeah. I think for that reason, it can be a really great place to, to condition your game and condition your short game specifically. Totally. Um, I think if I was to play there more often, I'd be a better, a much better chipper of the golf ball. I, I shot the first time I played there, I shot 10 over, which was my best round in a long time. I played great. Um, oh, 10 over and it was because, impressive. yeah, I was, it, and it's because it's because my scoring irons were, you know, my, my wedges and my pitching wedge and my nine iron were like really dialed that day. Um, and that's really what that golf course is about. If you can put a decent, you know, hybrid or three wood into play on the par fours, you don't really need driver out there no. very often. If ever you can get away without having it in your bag pretty easily. Um, you can put yourself in good positions to, to score with your, with your wedges. But if your wedges and your short irons are not dialed, like you're going to have a long day. So it's uh it's an interesting place. Yeah. And now that you're saying it, I kind of feel stupid because you, you're right. I mean, I think the word I'm trying to say is like, it's an executive golf course. That's, that's right. Like I, I, yeah. I don't think about, I don't think about places like that often because I don't play places like that often, but yeah. And so what, what I just want to be careful. Like what I, like when I say it's like not a good golf course, it's like, I think that it's, um, it's unconventional from what I, I usually play and what I like to play, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. I just think that they have put, I think to your point, they have put a golf course over land that is actually pretty unforgiving to a golf course. And yeah, like, like, I don't know, like, like maybe I'm wrong because I don't play many executive courses, but I think it just bucks the trend of like, and I think this is a shout out to Troy. I remember when I posted, we were there, I forgot what he said, but basically he was like, essentially it was like, did you get your, your teeth kicked in? I was like, yeah, I, I kind of did. Um, but I think it also is funny because going back to the whole idea of the in crowd, it kind of is how we felt about Gearheart, where we were saying like, like, like I think you and I might've said this, or I said this to somebody, I was like, man, if there's some like, 67 year old guy who plays the right tees and hits it 225 yards off the tee and plays at Gearheart 150 times a year. I'm like, that guy will kick your teeth in. He knows where to hit it. He knows where not to hit it. He's never going to miss in the wrong spot. And I can see why Goat Hill, especially, you know, I, I did not know the, I don't know the age demographic or anything like that, but like, it feels like for the in crowd, there's that feeling of like, after you pay your toll enough, right? Or I'm like, you know, I roll in with my, you know, I'm going to hit a long drive and shit. And it's like the golf course, like, Hey, fuck you. Like we're not, we're not interested in that shit out here. You, you pay the toll and you pay the toll. And then eventually you kind of get the hang of the place. And I can totally see it's one of those places that like, I don't know how fun it is for me, like for someone like me to just like parachute in play it once and leave again. It's kind of like, Oh, it's kind of like jarring, but I can totally see why if that's, if, you know, if you're semi-retired and you play there four times a week and you know, every blade of grass on that place, I can see it being like the best because it feels like a place that would totally reward one local knowledge and two, to your point, getting like super dialed to their short game. And again, also to your point, I think it's a great way to like, dude, that shit will travel, right? We'll talk about Tori later. It's like, it wouldn't help it Tori to have your scoring club super dialed in. Right. It's like that travels. Yeah. So yeah, it's not that it's not a good golf course. It's just, it's unconventional for many golf courses you're ever going to see. The, the word that comes to mind for for having success out there is restraint. Yeah, I think clearly. knowing knowing that like playing driver most of the time is not going to work. I, I mean, truly, you probably don't need it on any hole out there. And knowing when to go for the green and when not to, there are lots of lots of holes out there that you can reach with a three wood. Um, 
knowing when that's appropriate, when that's not appropriate. There's the whole, I think, I want to say it's four or five, the one that I compared to number 10 at River Pines, where um, it's a short four, yeah. and you have a very short landing area. You could play a nine iron two, and then play for the green with another nine iron. You go basically nine iron, nine iron to the green. Um, or you can pull three wood and, and try and go for it over a huge canyon to get to the green. You know, playing the correct shot there goes a long way. I tried to pull the three wood and blew it way left. And, um, you know, it's, I, I think playing within yourself at Goat Hill is, is how you score better there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it makes you think. And I think that's, that's maybe an overlooked aspect of the course. It makes you think more than a, a lot of other courses of that, of that length. Yeah. Um, so that's maybe, maybe, uh, a, a point in the, uh, in the, in the pro column for why Goat Hill is, is a good spot to go play golf, but certainly not the kind of place I'd, I'd go to every week. No. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's also now that we're, I mean, this is why, again, it's helpful to, to have these conversations and unpack it. I, I think it, it's all kind of becoming more clear now to me because yeah, like I'm on record as saying like, candidly, the golf that I like playing the most is, you know, is, is challenging golf that requires like you, you hit like a lot of, you know, not every hole, but like you're hitting driver, you know, on pretty much every tee box you're being challenged. And like, so if you think about it, like Goat Hills, if that's the yin, this is the yang of that. Right. I mean, to your point, if we played it again, I actually probably would just everything four hybrid and down, maybe my two hybrid, like three wooden driver. I mean, I, I like on the, on the quote unquote par five, I had driver pitching wedge in there because I took it over the trees that was cool, but also like very goat hill. I missed the green and I ended up making par, <laughs> you know, it's like, Oh, cool. Like, um, but yeah, I, I think that to your point, it, it, it's funny. I, as someone who, uh, I like to think a little bit, but I don't like to restrain myself. I like to swing hard at driver. Goat hill is the exact opposite of that. Um, but for people listening, if you're expecting to go, you're, you hear executive course and you think, you know, Ooh, it's like Oceanside vibes, kind of what I was expecting. Um, it's just a lot harder than you think it's going to be, um, which isn't a bad thing. It's just like, be prepared to get really, really tested and you need to chip and putt really well to your point. Cause if you miss the green from 85 yards to a small green, that's way more penal out there than it is a lot of other places I've played. Uh, yeah. And now that, now that I think about it, what we just said, 15 minutes ago about Gearhart being a great match play course because it's a bunch of half par holes. It would be a group. I think that's yeah. Goat Hill would be an awesome place for match play. And I think that's what they do. I think they have I mentioned that Pirate League, yeah. the mandatory golf Fridays they do. They have a bunch of different leagues out there that lend themselves towards match play because of the course. Yeah, it's not like, a stroke play golf course, man. It's just not it's no. Don't go out there and grind over a score. Go out there and win a hole. Like that's that's really what Goat Hill's about. Yeah. Hit the green. If you don't Keep it close, like put the pressure on somebody, go for, you know, go for the long par three or the short par four with a three wood, put some pressure on someone. That's what Goat Hill's for. That's how you would have fun out there. Like grinding over a, a number is not, yeah, that's not, that's not that kind of course. Yeah. It's also a little reminder to people to play different formats. Uh, Cause we had me and Nick, we had our buddy Rob and we had Howie. So we had, we had all different skill levels. Um, I went back to my childhood. We played bingo, bango, bongo, which for people who don't know, um, bingo is, so there's three points per hole. Bingo is first person on the green. Bango is when all balls are on the green, who is the closest. And then, uh, no bango. And then bongo is basically whoever makes the longest putt essentially. Um, and uh, shout out to Nick. Nick won the day. Uh, he, he vanquished, uh, every, all of us, but it's just also a reminder too around like that, that was actually, I mean, like, even though I'm, I'm, we're being quote unquote, like critical, it was the perfect place to play of like unconventional, like, I don't know what I shot. You don't like, it didn't matter. It was just, we're playing this weird game. And um, yeah, I, I, it's just a reminder to, you know, as much as we love match play, when you've got people, you were trying to figure out how he, what might your handicap be? So talking about making contact. It's like, that's, that's not what we're trying to do here. No, it's actually, it's a great, it's a great game for the group that we had with a low handicap, a mid handicap, a high handicap, and a no <laughs> handicap. Like it's the perfect game for that because Howie was competitive yeah. in a lot of the holes. So that was, think, that he's was, not even going to listen great. to this, but just to rip Howie though, when he you know chunk it off the tee, and then he would <laughs> he, 
he 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 would dr- <laughs> drop just off the green and then chip it closest, then claim he gets a point, just like selectively picking it. So he's you know he's got this easy chip. That's not in the spirit of the rules, Howie. That's not how you're supposed to do this. But it was really fun, um, and also just fun. Uh, uh, we've we've posted about this before. I did the no laying up all shot event with Casey from no uh, from no laying up, and uh, saw her and her husband John out there. So I looked outside and. It's also just a reminder too that Goat Hill, you know, it, it's got it's got a lot of street cred, right? You got people coming. I mean, you know, John and Casey live in Vegas. They were in Oceanside for their TPI, and the one round of golf they played was at Goat Hill. So, it's a destination, even though it's this kind of scruffy, weird golf course. It's it's good. And, and the other thing too, I got to give them credit. They know what they're doing. Like the the merch is well done. Uh, the logo is great. Um, th- th- they know what they're doing. And again, I think that like if we go back there in 10 years, I think it's going to be, it's still going to feel homemade, but there's something charming about like, we've sort of put this golf course on this piece of land and we're going to make it our own with our revetted bunkers and stuff. Like I think it's only going to appreciate and value. And again, to play for $48, whether you're a local or not, like it's this nice to have an affordable golf course. Cause now we're going to shift to Torrey Pines where if you're a San Diego resident, Oh boy, are you sad? But if you're not, um, <laughs> You're, you're going to pay a bit of a premium. So Nick, why don't you kind of give people a sense of, um, I mean, yeah, like you've told me the spiel, but Torrey Pines, how it works. Uh, and also just kind of your overview, because you were very adamant that unless it was important for me to walk the grounds that John Rom did, I guess, even though John Rom plays Torrey North, we should just stay away from South and, and play North. Just give people an overview that we can talk a little bit about the, the specifics of the golf course. Yeah. So, you know, Torrey's got, the two 18s, the north and the south course. We played the north course, which every San Diego resident will tell you is the better and more fun uh, of the two courses. I think um, every time I'm out there with someone who also has a residence card and who gets to play it pretty often, like I played, I think I played there a dozen times last year. Um, everyone says the north course is better. I put it this way, when I see tee times available, I'm jumping on the north course tee times. I'm probably not going to jump on a south course tee time. It's just not very much fun. Um, but the South Course is the championship course. That's where the U.S. Open was held uh, in 08 and in 21. So if you do want to go hit the shots that Tiger hit to, you know, chase down Rocco Mediate or, or you know, hit the putts that, that John Ron hit to, to win the championship, I think he, he nailed those putts on 17 and 18 to win. So, um, you know, you can go do that. It's more expensive. It's a lot harder. It's not very much fun. And the views aren't as good. I think um, of the the four nines on property, the the back nine on the north course is by far the best nine on property. So um, I'm glad you got to experience that. I'm glad we got to go out there and uh, show you what I think is the best course in in uh, municipal golf in Southern California. So um, I guess I guess we're not we're not counting Salt Park. Salt Park. I don't know if that quite counts as municipal. It's public. I don't know if that's municipal, um, but truly owned by the city. I mean, the whole facility at at, at uh, Torrey is owned by the city, and so it's it's a really cool thing that we get get access to. Uh, for twenty five dollars a year, we get a residence card, and that residence card gives us pretty preferred rates. You know, when we play uh, a weekend morning tea time, I think I paid sixty bucks for our um, uh, for our Torrey North uh, round. I think it would be like what, what? eighty something at, at the South Course. Oh, it was a, um, yeah, it's 185 for me. So basically it was three X for yeah. me as a non-resident. Yeah. And that doesn't include the, uh, the advanced booking fees as well. $30 ahead for, for the booking fee. So, Oof. um, yeah, little, little extra there. Uh, but as a resident, I don't have to pay that if I can book it within a week. So that, that helps defray the cost. It truly is like the North course, especially is like the best deal in public golf, um, that I've come across, uh, in Southern California. So really, really, uh, blessed to have that in the arsenal and and the regular rota of courses that i i play it's um i kind of spend my time between there the other muni at balboa park and then there's a navy course that i play down here too but um yeah spend a lot of time at tory north it's definitely a special place i love love playing there and glad i got to go out there with you uh, when you're down here a few weeks ago yeah i think that's the big thing is we've been there before like actually before you even like had a proper residence in San Diego. And I think the big thing for people, if they go, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, it's a really impressive facility. I mean, it's just, it, there's a lot of going on. There's of course, there's a ton of people playing golf. There's a lot of people walking around um, really great bar and grill area where we had, we had a couple beers after um, it feels very like cozy and homey. It has a real sense of place. Um, and, and to your point about price, I mean, we also have the residence card, but like for us, 
it's I forget the exact amount, but I think it's maybe like 150 or 160 and it's for like two years, I believe. Um, and, uh, this is meant to piss anybody off, but like, I mean, Tory North is like head and shoulders better than, than, than Harding Park. Um, I like Harding fine. Do I think Harding is anything special? No. Um, do, I, I love that we get to play it and similar to you, you know, when I was unemployed, you go out to Harding on a Wednesday at nine ten, and it's $54. It's like, awesome. This is really really great um you know golf in the city of san francisco it feels important it feels unique but but Torrey's a, a much better golf course i think and again f- facilities that that very much go with it um yeah and i think to get into the course a little bit i mean i think that well i guess we should give the caveat is like i'm already excited in the future to come back simply because i feel like i got a little bit uh of a different flavor of tory because I believe the term that you use, but we don't know if this is a, the technical term, but they had just, what we believed was Nick said scalped the golf course because they're getting it prepared for uh, the farmers where, so basically they stop water in the course, cut big kind of vertical lines in the fairway. And I, I assume within days of me being there, they were dumped a bunch of overseed to kind of get it ready. So Jordan, who he played with uh, one of uh, Nick's, well, but buddies are kind of, they play golf a few times a year. Um, Jordan was saying that it's cool. Like it was cool that it was brown because we got to experience like firm and fast. And Nick, you were telling me that it was cool. That like, you know, there's balls we would have found. We, we found that we might not have found in the rough, but it was a bit hard. We're like around the greens, the, the rough was almost like, hay. like it was like very like crunchy at top. And then, I don't know. It's just like, um, I'm not like a conditioned snob, but I mean, it was that that's not how that golf course is supposed to play. Uh, and I don't just mean, I think the firm and fast two thumbs up, but the scalping component of it, like, and also like, let's be real. I, I don't like need a golf course to be green, but when I'm playing Tory Pines, like, you know, I, I kind of expect some rough and it's going to be green and to get it where it's like, basically like just, to use your word, I think it's correct. Scalped, no rough lines in the fairway. Like I, I said to you, it feels like it was uh, January in Georgia, right? Where it's like the whole course is dead, the greens are still green. Um, it just like visually was, um, it visually was a little weird, and uh, it certainly played weird. Um, I, I know that like I, my, my first thing, my wedge on the second hole. There, there's a couple. It, it took me a couple holes to get used to the turf interaction of that. So um, I feel like I still have a very strong P of E on the golf course and I like it, but um, I don't think many people who listen to this are going to go down to Troy North and get it the way that we got it. Right. No, that's, that's the first time that I've played it. You know, I play Troy North a lot. It's the first <laughs> time I played it with those particular conditions for me, it was a treat because it's never firm and fast. It's always, they have water windows, um, on many, many times that you'll play Tory, they'll have a water window where they're watering the course throughout the day in between groups, right? They'll have a 30 minute water window. And I've played right behind the water window before. That's not very fun. Um, firm and fast are, are words that are usually not associated with the Tory property. Um, so for me, that was really cool to, to see it in this condition and to play it where it's brown and there's no rough and you can blow your drive wherever the hell you want because it's a big ballpark. And like you said, there's no, not even any rough lines out there the day that we played it. Um, that was pretty cool because that was different. But I, I felt bad that he paid all this money for the out-of-town rate to come play Tory North. And you don't really get the full experience, which is, you know, Tory's really hard when they're when the rough is up. And it is green and the fairways are in great shape. They really keep the course in awesome shape. And, and to their credit and to, you know, uh, to not make everything bad news the greens were in good shape i thought the greens were great no no issue with the greens when you were there so that's the most important thing the best part of the golf course, most important part of the golf course was in good shape but yeah like the shots around the green were really funky i was blading everything it was it was just not not uh not what you would expect at at tory and to top it off we teed off later i, I booked us a tee time i think at like 10 15 or 10 30 to try and give us a little bit of uh, a little bit of time for the marine layer to burn off because that time of year i think we played in in uh, early september mid-september that time of year we still get the marine layer pretty heavy in the mornings um and it really wasn't totally burned off when we were playing so 
part of the the appeal of playing Tory North, especially, or the views that you get um, when you're playing on the back nine. There are some really spectacular views, and and um, there's a, a great overlook. You can see all the way down to La Jolla. You see La Jolla Cove, um, just really really pretty area, and um, there was, it was just too foggy. Like you just didn't really get to see much of the view or much of the ocean at all. And that's definitely part of the appeal of playing there. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get you down there again at some point when, when, uh, the conditions are a little bit better and hopefully the weather is a little bit more favorable and, um, you know, you get, get a real Tory North experience definitely was not, not 10 out of 10, unfortunately this time. Yeah, no. And I think the big thing too is, uh, I, I give them credit where I think that I actually think they've priced it appropriately because like, I don't know. I, I forget exactly, but like, I guess at some point, at some point, I'll take you to Harding. Um, Cause I, I think that if we book it at the right time and like super twilight, we can get it for, you know, I'm doing massive air quotes, like affordable, but like <clears throat> there's times at Harding where if you're booking, like, you know, if we were to book like a Saturday equivalent, like a Saturday morning tea time for you, like out of non Bay area, I mean, you're talking like over like $300, like, I mean, probably similar to what it might be to play like Tory South because it's the same cliche, right? It's like people go like, I will say you go stand at 16 T and you stand there and you're like, I don't really care where the T is. I don't know how Colin Moore Cow hit it to eight feet and made that putt. Like it's got like that shot gave that place a real sense of like, 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 I don't know. You feel something over that T shot in a way that like it feels important. Um, but I think 185 is right because I mean, maybe I'm, and I think I am like super, uh, jaded coming from the Bay area. Cause like at this point I consider my home course to be Creek of South Creek of South is 90 bucks for me. That's just what I'm used to paying for. I mean, it's great golf course, good conditions. So, you know, paying, yeah, it's a hundred dollars more, but like, okay. Like, you know, I, I am not local and I very much believe in like, Hey, like this is like meant, meant towards you, but it's like, I'm fine to pay a little bit more so that you can like have a better rate. And I want the same thing here. Right. It's like locals should have that, that preference. And it feels very like, it feels very proper because I think that to give people a sense, like I viewed it in like chapters where like, um, Tory North like starts hard. Like I forgot the sign said, it's like the hardest three hole stretch on the planet or something. Right. It's like, yeah, it's the undertow it's holes two, three, and four. It's, I don't know. I think the sign says like the hardest three hole stretch on the PGA tour. I don't, I don't know if there's any veracity to that. I, I don't, Sounds I don't like a know. PGA tour comms mumbo jumbo thing. Yeah. I will say the long, undertow is long holes. That's pretty good marketing though. It's totally marketing. I prefer, I prefer to call it the lobster trap. Uh, I refer to it as the lobster trap. I think that's a better name. And if I was in charge of marketing for Tory Pines, I would change the name to the lobster trap. So that you could put it on merch. I mean, that's under, the thing. You, you can't, you, you that, can't really put, an undertow on merch. It also sounds like something else, but you know, this is a, the, I was going to say this is a family podcast. This is not a family podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it kind of starts off hard, but then like, I don't know, there's some really good, still some really good holes on the front nine. Um, like, is it six, the drive, the quote unquote drivable par four. That's a great hole. Um, seven, seven, seven. Um, one thing that I also found surprising is the par, even though, cause I, I view, maybe it's through the lens of South, but I view Tory as sort of like a brawny golf course, which I think it is, but the par fives are super gettable. Like I think number six, I want to say the par five, I think I had driver number five. Yeah. I, I had driver six iron in there. I had a good drive, yeah. but like, I think it's interesting where like, I can tell it's a hard golf. I mean, it was a hard golf course, some very demanding shots, but like if you had a good drive on the par fives, like you can go get it uh, on some of those holes. So it's like an interesting juxtaposition where there's like a drivable for, short five but then you play the, the we're calling it the lobster trap yeah that's like a hang on for dear life it's like can you hit like a four hybrid up the hill oh and if you and if you over club like i do you're in the fucking like you're in the you know you're off the, you're literally yeah. in the in the crap so and then the back nine i think is like the front nine's good and the back nine's where it's at though like the the back nine is really good yeah the, the routing in the back nine is way more interesting. I, I do think your point about the um, the par fives being gettable is a great one. I, I don't, the front nine I think has some forgettable holes, but I think you called out number five is a really good call. Yeah. That's, I always look forward to playing that hole. Great green. It is gettable. Great green. Really great green. 
Um, number the drivable four number seven is also super fun. That's the tee shot you just look forward to hitting because you know you got a chance to to hit the green and have a putt for eagle. Um, I, the last time, uh, two times ago, maybe maybe three months ago, I was playing Tory North uh, with a guy, and he like honest honest to God, guy eagled the par five ninth, the par five tenth, and then eagled the short par four eleventh, um, which is just it was absolutely banana lands. I had never seen anything like that. Don't expect to ever see anything like that again. What, Three what years is in shoot? a row. Uh, I don't, I didn't ask. I should have shout out to my guy, Jay. His name was Jay. Just some rando. I got paired with at Tory. He's a local dude was probably Please tell me he in, his, in his mid fifties. I have no idea. 603 he was, I mean, holes. He could, it was, it was pretty spectacular. I don't know. I, I don't know. I didn't ask him. It was, uh, I told, I told Jay that I'd be telling the story of this round and his, his three hole stretch, nine, 10, 11, uh, for the rest of my life. And so here it is, Jay, uh, on the podcast, just for you, pretty incredible, but yeah, some of the holes out there are gettable. Um, and that really makes it fun. And, um, you know, the, the front nine has some of those gettable holes we talked about. The back nine is where Tory North comes alive. Um, the, the 10th hole par five down the hill, really cool. You, you tee off Such a cool from the hole. clubhouse. It's actually, it runs parallel to number one on the South course. Um, they're kind of a reflection of each other. Um, and you, you tee off, you, you, you sort of crest this ridge. So your second shot, if you've hit a good drive, your second shot can be downhill um, onto this green. Really fun hole, great reveal. That's when you kind of see the ocean really for the first time. The front nine is more away from the ocean. The back nine is where you start to interact with the ocean a lot more on the North course. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think I think the stretch 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 are, are the best holes on the on the entire property. And those are always, always a treat to play. Lots of lots of views and, and some really interesting routings and greens. So, um, you know, the, the back nine is is spectacular. It's my favorite nine holes in San Diego, without a doubt. Yeah. The, yeah. I think really the back nine across the board is spectacular. And, and yeah, I, I love um, I mean, when I think about some of the most distinctive holes that I've played, like one at Sheep Ranch, and I know you <laughs> didn't really see too much of it in the snow. We'll, we're getting back there next year. But I think those like those holes like that, like like a par five where you get the tee shot and then it sort of reveals to a, a downhill green. Like if you were to do like, a, you know, that, that's not a template hole. But if like we were talking about modern golf as like a template hole, it's about as good as it gets, right? Where it's like, you had a good shot. You're kind of anticipating it. And then it's like, cool. What's my number? Can I go for it? Like you're standing there kind of like, you know, doing the calculus and analysis. And I feel like a lot of those holes tend to be either like one or 10, right? So you're kind of like, okay, like I'm in a good spot. I want to press the gas pedal here, get the back nine going. Um, yeah. And, and, it, and it's not a perfect analogy, but it did sort of remind me a little bit. This isn't totally fair. Cause I think there's, there are coastal holes on, the front but it reminds me of someone um i think it was aaron he called he said tory he just said um he said harding park is like a, a cinnamon roll because basically uh harding park the front nine is like all kind of like back and forth and then the back nine is like all the way around and it kind of feels like that where it's like okay because i mean the hard part is like there's holes where you can like on the front nine where you're like aware of the ocean Probably not as much in our case because it was so foggy, but like, you know, like I saw the ocean on the par on number three, but only because I hit my four hybrid almost into the water, (laughs) but you know, it's there, but you're not totally aware. But the back nine is just like, it's kind of slapping you in the face the whole time. Um, I'm curious, Nick, the the whole is, is it 15, the kind of signature par three? It is. And and I think it's worth talking about 14 before 15. I think 14, 14 is without a doubt my favorite hole in the course. It's the one that I'd sort of was hyping up all around well, as being well, like the I best just, reveal. I, I, should, on the pro- I totally shit the bed on that hole. <laughs> you really had like the worst possible, not quite worst possible because the fog wasn't horrendous, but like you didn't have, you had bad conditions. The views weren't good. And then the best hole on the course was like your worst Sliced hole. Sliced it off the planet, hit a punch shot, <laughs> punch shots that so, go directly into the cave and then I just picked up. <laughs> yeah was it was it awesome um but it is it's a spectacular hole i i absolutely love the the tee shot and then the second shot because you're walking down the fairway um after hitting your tee shot and as you're walking down the fairway you, you eventually crest this hill 
and the green opens up below you. It, it's sort of this infinity green with La Jolla in the background, the ocean on the right. It's really spectacular, really, really pretty hole. It's my favorite hole in the course, lots of fun to play. Um, and I think is, is the reason why they moved the routing. So back in, I think 2016, uh, maybe 2015, they flipped the routings. So the back nine used to be the front nine, front nine used to be the back nine. Um, but all the ocean holes are, are on the back nine. So they, they wanted to really show that off and have that as sort of a nice crescendo. Um, and it starts with 14. 14 brings you out to the ocean. And then you play 15, the par three. That's, that is sort of the iconic Tory North hole. It's, I think it plays like 60 yards downhill or 70 yards downhill. Um, it's a again, decent with, play killer. Holy shit. Yeah, that, was that was shocking. That was tough. That was tough. But it's, that, it's, was, that, that was hole is, really tough. I've seen so many pictures of that place. That hole is so much harder. No one ever told me how hard that hole was. Totally makes yeah, sense why it's a yeah. pace of play killer. People just like shipping balls into the canyon. No sense of like, I mean, I, I had my shot and I was like in the air. I'm like, I don't know if that's three feet or if that's way over the green. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a tough one. Pace of play killer. Uh, but that is the iconic, you know, the iconic photo from Tory North is yeah. uh, from the T on, on 16 or on 15 and then. Yeah, 16 back up the hill. Beautiful tee box. That's another great photo spot. Go to the back tees on, on 16 and take I, a picture with 16. the ocean. And, I thought 16 yeah. is a great hole. Plays plays so much longer than it actually is because it is way uphill. You're going right back up the same hill you just played down yeah. for from 15. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's a great stretch of holes and, and one that I, you know, for, for 60 bucks, I feel very, very blessed to be able to play, uh, you know, pretty, pretty regularly. So 14 is your favorite hole out there? Without a doubt. Yeah, 14 is fun. I think 13 is also really fun. I think it's yeah, I like it's one of the more too. more interesting greens. It might even be the most interesting green on the course. Um, I think there's – that's another thing that sets the north course apart from the south course. The greens on the north course are so much more interesting, and there's so much more variety on the north course. The south course, all the greens are exactly the same. Um, the, the north course has a, a large variety. It's actually similar to number five in a way at soul park which i think a lot of people on this podcast would would understand what i mean with you know the the ridge the spine that splits the green in half from from left to right Mm -hmm. the ridge runs through the middle of the green back to front and you have a left side and a right side and um it's it's raised it's kind of almost like a turtleback green it's raised pretty far above the fairway around it and so it's a hard green to hit if you're on the right side you got a real good chance the the correct side you have a chance at, at birdie if you don't you know three puttings definitely in your future so um that's a fun one. Uh, I think there's a lot of fun. That that whole stretch, 13 through 17, I think is really, really fun. Not not a bad hole between those. And, and I know you're not like shitting on them, but also like I think 10, 11, and 12 are great too. Like, um, like again, we already talked about 10. 11 sort of weird because, you know, you kind of feel sad you're going away from the water, but, you know, it's a very short hole with interesting green. 12, I think Jordan's take, which uh, – I don't know just because I'm not a local, like I I'm just going to kind of abstain, but he thinks he said he thinks 12 is the best par three out there. I think it's probably the most like, um, uh, it's definitely less gimmicky than 15. Um, definitely less gimmicky. Um, so yeah, when you kind of go through the list, it's like, I would actually say, I think like 18 is a little bit forgettable, but 10 through 17 is like pretty flawless. Um, yeah, because because nine, nine and 18 feel exactly the same kind of just going back towards it very much feels like we got to get you back to the clubhouse. So we're just going to like, here's a golf hole to get you back to the clubhouse. Um, one, one, I would I would argue that one and 18 are basically yeah. the same hole and they play next to each other. So <laughs> yeah. it makes sense. Um, yeah, just got to get you out. Gotta get you and, back. Yeah, got to get you to yeah. the lobster trap. You got to get you to the lobster trap. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But like, yeah, but I think like 10 through 17 is especially you consider the public golf, like about as good of a stretch of public golf as, as you've got. Um, and, and to that point, I think one of the, one of the secrets of Tory um, is because that back nine at the North course is so good and is so much better than the other nines on the property. Um, there's a really, if, if you just want to experience that and you don't want to pay the full freight rate, uh, you could show up early and uh, on the weekends, and they'll let you out on the back nine, you know, for the first hour that the course is open. I, I'm not sure exactly the times, but you can get out early and just play the back nine and you pay the residence rate. So if you're out of town, you want to come down, we want to go play that nine hole stretch again. And we don't want to play 
the rest of the golf course, which is probably what we'll do next time you're down here. Yeah. You'll pay the 60 bucks that I paid for the 18. You'll pay that for the nine holes yeah. um, just to get out and play those nine. So that's, yeah. that's what I would do. If, if you're, you know, really want to get on property and not pay the, the full freight, wake up early and go play nine. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we're talking about it, I really think about it. It's really just like one, nine and 18. Cause I do, even though it's, you know, dopey that it's branded, the undertow is, is it's good. Um, five is a cool par five. I liked six, is, you know, six is a really good green seven's yeah. drivable, really liked eight, the par three. It's really just the holes, the connector holes of like one, nine and 18 got to get you out and get you back. But everything else is good. Everything else is like really good out there, which again, to have 15 really good holes for $60, it's like uh, on the coast. It's like, yeah. And also I think to go, you know, to Andy Johnson's always banging on about, you know, um, Tory South, like again, Tory North, like these are holes are like on, you know, they're, they're on the edge. You can help me like, you know, from what Andy's described, it feels like the South is kind of removed from the, the, the edge, but like these holes felt mu- very much like on the coast. The North coast, the North course definitely plays closer to the edge of the canyons. Um, there's, there's a lot of erosion that happens uh, and cliff collapses happen. There's uh, just, earlier this year black's beach which is a beach just below tory just below and and you know 100 yards down from tory um had a pretty major cliff collapse and so it's really tough to build these golf holes close to the edge of the canyons in defense of tory is 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 what you can you can call this section of the podcast um you really can't build the golf course like that close to the edge because it's just getting worn away and worn away and i think on the hike that you do when you go to the tory pines uh what state park or state mm-hmm. forest or whatever the hike that we did the first time you were down here you saw how much erosion happens along those cliffs um yeah, there's true. constant constant you know movement happening those cliffs are constantly collapsing and and eroding down to the beach so um you really can't play like that close to the edge and safely i guess or at least not not for a very long time you can't expect the golf course to be there if you're gonna uh i guess that's a have the, point the course eroding away. So that's why they aren't building the course right up to the edge of the cliffs, especially on the South course. The North course, I think does a better job of, of getting you out towards the water. You can hear the waves, especially on, um, on 15, you can hear and, and 16, you can hear the, the water quite a bit. Yeah. Not so much in the South course. Um, it, I think, I think also they, they just do a better job of routing the North course and the South course. The South course really is like one hole that plays along the water number four the north course has you know that entire stretch 14 yeah. through through 16 and you said north was weisskopf right as you said yeah i think he uh it was you know it was the billy bell i think did uh did both of them originally and then uh weisskopf redid redid the north course like 15 or 16 something like that yeah and he's the one that flipped the routing got that right yeah that's that's it, it would feel very yeah, it, it would it would feel different. It would be like if, like if Harding flipped like flipped there and I it would be like, oh my god! If, if you're finishing on that like, you know, back and forth stretch, would be like, no, no, it, it needs to kind of crescendo. So, but yeah, I it's mean, still. I, think it's a gem. I, I, I do think it is a gem. It is a gem. I don't don't mean to cut you off there. It it does disappoint me a little bit that we have this incredible piece of property. It really, is one of the most spectacular places you could ever hope to play golf, and we just kind of threw a couple of Parkland courses on there. Would have been really cool if, if back in 2015 or 16, when they had Weisskopf redo it, they contracted somebody else and you know made the North Course different than the South Course, not just in terms of playing next to the water, but you know maybe different agronomy, different texture to the golf course, different bunkering. Um, it would have been, I, th- I think, it is a missed opportunity to have yeah. just two Parkland courses plopped down next to the ocean. There's such a it's such a neat canvas to work with. Um, and I think that's the criticism that Tory gets is that it is not that interesting. Certainly the South course is not very interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, there's, there's definitely room to improve. I don't know if the city's ever going to do that because it is such a cash cow for them the way it is. I don't think they're incentivized to ever change anything, but, um, you know, for what it is, it is a, it is a fun, especially the North course. It is a fun place to go play golf. The back nine is really, really great golf and definitely feel lucky to be able to play there you know, as often as I'm able to. Yeah. No, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, yeah. I mean, again, I, I, I'm not enough of a turf guy to know how translatable it would be, but 
Yeah, I mean, a la Bandon, right? It's like, you know, get some fescue, like, you know, make it where firm and fast isn't just when you're literally killing the golf course, like make it where it's like the, um, cause like, as far as condition wise in Marine layer, it's like, I mean, it kind of, I mean, obviously sheep ranch is a way more spectacular, you know, um, you are really playing on the cliffs there, but like, you know, I, I think that like, I like the first time I played sheep ranch with big, we, uh, you know, it was, it was summertime in, in Oregon. And I mean, we were in pants and, you know, and, and sweaters and, um, there was kind of that mist all day. It, it felt very similar to what, you know, we were playing in. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, like, I guess that is kind of where you have to kind of, you have to slice a little bit more subtlety. Cause like, is especially North, like, is it a gem? Is it a great value? Is it good for locals? Yeah. Um, and I'm just making this up but it might be a B compared to what, you know, if you let, you know, one, one of the big, you know, one of the modern architects come in there and, you know, totally change the agronomy and reimagine it. It, it could be, you know, one, one of the finest golf, one of the finest public golf courses in the country, which I think that it's really good. I don't think it's in that tier, right. Of like, is it like one of the finest public courses in the country? Probably not. Um, when you factor in value and stuff, I think it definitely gets rounded up, but you know, if it could be 60 bucks and, you know, firm and fast and fescue. And, you know, again, like the way I always compare it is, you know, again, we wouldn't feel this way about South, but like, you know, you, you got two wonderful, it was like one's Wagyu and one's, you know, diver scallops, right. Both delicious, you know, sources of protein, but completely different. Right. Um, and, and I think that like, it's really great when you find a property where, you do have those differences. Like, it's like, it's like, again, this is private golf, but it's like my dad, it's like, you know, Lane athletic club, right. Where it's like the Highlands course is, you know, from the back tees is like a 78 rating and it's just gonna just kick your ass. Right. And then they just redid the other course where it's a lot more like friendly and open, like, like they're both, you know, great golf courses, but they're completely different and they're asking totally different questions and they play differently um, and you know, my, my dad now plays most of his golf on the other course and he goes and plays Highlands when he wants, he's like, cool, I'm playing good golf and I want to kind of see how good I am. Right. Um, he goes and, you know, plays that, but kind of like when Jordan was talking about his splits, you know, you probably play, and you still do this now with North, but you play North nine times out of 10. And then you go over to South and be like, cool, I, I might get exposed, but we're, let's go get tested. Right. But it's a totally different test where. Um, I think it's more interesting, but to your point, it's, it's within kind of the same, it appears to be as someone who has not played South to be like a, a different variation of the same kind of golf course to your point, Parkland. Yeah. 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 I, I play a South course once a year and that's plenty. Uh, I played a North course a dozen times a year and can't get enough. So do, do you know, before I let you go, do you know why they decided to in 2016 have that work done? Like, do you know what the precipitating event was? No, I, I don't. Um, no idea. Glad they did though, because the back nine is spectacular now. So, yeah, because I always think about that. Because like you know, Andy talks about the course that probably needs a, a restoration the most is Pebble Beach. But you know, when I think about Pebble. You know, every eight minutes they're making seven hundred and twenty-five, fifteen hundred. Uh, it's three thousand dollars every eight minutes. Um, you think about, you know, how great it would be if they kind of, you know, expanded the greens and made Pebble what it could be. But when you're making $3,000 every eight minutes, why would you do that? <laughs> um, so I'm always fascinated when like work is done like that on North, like what caused that. But I don't know. Fun to dream on. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is always just going to be a dream, though, because same same situation as Pebble. The, the city makes so much money from the Tory property. It, and you know what? They do good things with it. You know, they, they've got a great facility at Balboa that they keep in awesome shape, um, which Balboa doesn't make money. It gets all, you know, it's all part of the city parks department, city golf department that takes all the money from Torrey and distributes it to Balboa. They have an awesome beginner's facility at Mission Bay that they just totally redid this, this past couple of years. Um, and all that money comes from Torrey. So there's no incentive for them to yeah. uh, to change anything at the moment, unfortunately. And when you and I are sitting here saying that like there's 15 of 18 great holes are also like, what are you complaining about? <laughs> you know? So I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Any, uh, any parting thoughts about anything at all, Mr. Bertese? 
No, no, I, I'm glad we got to do it. I think, um, you know, glad, glad we were able to make this trip happen. And I think uh, San Diego probably doesn't have the, the breadth of public golf options that the Bay has, but uh, we do have some really fun spots. So, you know, definitely proud to, to rep San Diego on the pod. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. You've got some gems and um, excited to get down there soon. But uh, thank you for coming on. We'll do it again soon. And uh, I don't exactly know when we're going to play golf together, but uh, I don't think it's going to be during that, during your kind of injury time now, it's not going to be that long getting to play together at the, like basically what we got four rounds, th- th- three rounds, four, four rounds together over the course of a month. I, I like that. We got to, we got to keep doing that. Agreed. Looking forward to the next one. Bye.